my heart just sunk down. You know? And I see it, and it, it looks bad, but you know, we will overcome. The owner of a Southside daycare center still reeling from the loss of his business in a fire early this morning, but he also promises to keep serving the community. And a teenager tragically dies in the middle of the street following a shooting on the southwest side. And this noon, police have made an arrest in the case. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Happening right now at the San Fernando Cathedral, the reenactment of the Passion of Christ. It's an annual tradition for Christians around the world and here and, and, and an observance that is known to gather thousands here in San Antonio. All right, Jonathan Coto has been covering today's holy services and now joining us live. Good afternoon, Jonathan. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon, Alicia. I'm here on the main plaza of the San Fernando Cathedral where that reenactment of the Passion of the Christ just concluded. And let me tell you, it's not the easiest uh, passion play to be a part of. My first experience uh, witnessing it firsthand, and I have to say, was an emotional one. And as you mentioned, today is Good Friday, also known as Great Friday, Holy Friday, and even Black Friday across Christian communities around the world. But here in San Antonio since 1983, this tradition has been celebrated. Thousands, thousands gathering here for the very first time. And some, it's been a tradition they've been following for their entire lives. We do know that uh, Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Cies, who uh, spoke with us earlier this morning, says, you know, although it's called a passion play, this commemoration was uh, no show. Uh, and what he meant by that is that we are commemorating the death, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary uh, nearly over 2,000 years ago. And, and I have to say today was a special experience. I'm gonna move out of the way so you can take a look at the staging. And uh, just a few moments ago, uh, that stage showed the entire scene. We know that uh, the, the role of Mary was played by Lorelai Ortiz and the role of Jesus was portrayed by John Austin. I did have an opportunity to speak with him. He said um, he's been a part of this uh, for years, since 2005. In fact, he said he's played a number of roles throughout uh, those years. Today, playing the role of Jesus as a request from a friend who asked him to play it. He initially declined, but after hearing his testimony, he was definitely inclined to do so. He said uh, he felt the calling to play Jesus this year. And I have to remind you folks, um, this uh, reenactment has been uh, has taken place today, Good Friday, after a two-year hiatus. We know uh, the COVID-19 pandemic postponing celebrations here today. But for more on the Holy Week services, for more of the services that are going to be taking place today inside the San Fernando Cathedral and throughout Easter weekend, you can head on over to ksat.com for a full list of those events. Reporting live from front of the San Fernando Cathedral, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. And a fire has destroyed a community staple on the south side, a longtime daycare and youth activity center. It broke out early this morning at Guardian Angel, destroying most of the building located in the 1600 block of Pleasanton Road. As Katrina Weber tells us, the fire has left parents and the center's owner devastated. Smoke signaled distress in the 1600 block of Pleasanton Road. Flames, though, spelled disaster and destruction of a longtime business. And you can see the flames from the back and then coming forward. And I was like, oh. Peggy Hauregi was driving by around 5 this morning and noticed the fire raging through Guardian Angel Child Development Center, a Southside staple for decades. But that's sad to have the daycare go down and the kids, you know. Dozens depended on it, a business started by one family to help many. Guardian Angel has been a service to the community because that's the way my late wife wanted it. Eli Guerra says under the guidance of his wife, a former nun who died four years ago, they converted an old church into a center that cared for children's minds and souls. Like other businesses, it struggled through the pandemic, now to fall to fire. They were starting to pick up kids, we were starting to do better, and uh, then, as, just to, as a matter of fact, I just gave everybody a raise. As bad as things may look right now, Guerra says he's still hopeful that somehow he can continue to carry on his wife's legacy. It has to go. It has to keep on going. I don't know how, but we're going we're to make it. With determination, he hopes to undo the devastation. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
man is under arrest this noon, charged in the deadly shooting on the southwest side that took the life of a 17 year old teen. San Antonio police say 43 year old Gerardo Godina has been charged with murder. This is a mugshot from a previous arrest back in 2015. The shooting happening just after 10 o'clock last night in the 5600 block of Stony Brook. That's near Medina Base Road. Officers say they are still looking to piece together the details that led to the shooting. They say the teen was shot and died in, in the street. Another shooting on the west side. A teenager survives after being shot during an overnight robbery. It happened around 11 in the 7900 block of West Military. SAPD says the teen was leaving a convenience store when he was approached by a suspect who robbed him and then shot him in the leg. The teen was driven to a nearby house on Pleasure Park to call for help and was taken to the hospital in stable condition. So far, there's no word of any arrests. And still no word on any arrests following a different shooting in the 4000 block of East South Cross last night. This was a scene around 11 when police found a man shot in the arm. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition and according to the victim, he was shot by another man. That shooting is still under investigation. And at this hour, police are still trying to track down a driver who crashed into a truck and then a house on the southeast side. This happened near East South Cross in the 4300 block of Forest Green. SAPD says for the driver lost control, took out a street sign, hit a truck before crashing through the bedroom wall of a house where a woman was sleeping. Fortunately, that woman was not hurt. Police say the driver took off and has not been found yet. They say a couple of other individuals at the scene were detained. SAPD says back to an early morning collision. SAPD says speed was a factor in an early morning collision between two motorcycles and an SUV. The crash happened on the northeast side in the 11,000 block of Perrin Bidal before 3 a.m. Police say the two motorcycles were speeding eastbound on Perrin Bidal when a suburban pulled out of the Perrin Oaks Plaza parking lot and was T-boned by one of the motorcyclists. Officers say the impact caused the rider to be thrown off the bike. He suffered some road rash and a gash on his head. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition and no other injuries were reported. A pedestrian had to be treated for injuries after being struck by a vehicle while trying to cross the access road of Loop 1604 on the city's north side. The man was found near the intersection of 1604 and Highway 281. SAPD says the man had injuries to his face and was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Alcohol is not believed to have been a factor and no charges have been filed. Now to the war in Ukraine. One of Russia's largest warships has sunk in the Black Sea, but the blow comes as Russian troops are poised to take control of a key port city. ABC's Marcus Moore is in Kyiv with the latest. The air raid sirens have been sounding today here in Kyiv, and there were new airstrikes overnight reportedly hitting targets outside the city as fighting intensifies in the east. And we are seeing new images of the horrific devastation in Mariupol and the commander of the Ukrainian Marine Forces there saying that the situation is critical and is pleading for help to break the Russian siege there, saying, quote, it must be done as soon as possible. And the Russians suffering a major blow to their military and its morale, confirming that the country the country's largest ship, the Moskva, sunk in the Black Sea. Ukraine's military claims two of its anti-ship missiles hit the cruiser, but Russia says the damage came after a fire on board near its ammunition stores. And as the $800 million in U.S. military aid goes to Ukraine, the Washington Post is reporting that the Russians are warning the U.S. in a formal diplomatic note of, quote, unpredictable consequences, saying the U.S. and NATO were adding fuel to the conflict with their weapons shipments. Meanwhile, officials here in Ukraine have said that the risk for an increased number of airstrikes is very high, particularly here in Kyiv, where the Russians have threatened to hit key command and communication centers in the city. Marcus Moore, ABC News, Kyiv. Still coming up, even before the play-in game, Becky Hammond headed to Utah to start her coaching career, and Coach Pop had a few words about her and her future. Larry Ramirez with that coming up. And coming up next, a unique Good Friday observance is happening later this afternoon at the Chapel of the Incarnate Word. We'll tell you what's different about this service. Outside with live camp. Not sure about this drizzle. It's kind of it's kind of a teaser. It's kind of it's almost uh, like mean, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Not very nice of Mother Nature when we need rain so badly to give us this just uh, yeah. 
a few sprinkles here and there, some patchy drizzle. Uh, that'll be letting up uh, after lunchtime, and we should see the cloud cover try to break up this afternoon. Um, a slightly better chance of storms does work into the forecast over Easter weekend, and we will definitely get into that coming up in the full forecast. First, let's check on the aquifer today. It is down three tenths of a foot, and in your pollen count, oak still very high, and this has been the trend the past few days. A new Highest reading so far this season, 21,000, the oak count today. Molds are low with a count of 300. Grass low with a count of 40. We'll talk about Easter weekend coming up next. Welcome back. Happening later today, 14 of the best and accomplished Oregon players in and around San Antonio are coming together to observe the 14 stations of the cross on this Good Friday with poetry and music. The The Chapel of the Incarnate Word is hosting an extended prayer service today where all 14 musicians will perform an excerpt from the French composer Marcel Dupré and poet Paul Claudel's Stations of the Cross. It's a body of work originally performed back in 1931 in Brussels. The musicians will play on the chapel's Schoenstein organ, the chapel's impressive pipe organ that was built by the world-renowned organ builders. In keeping with original performance, along with the musical pieces, poems will be read by 14 Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word. The reason why it's good is because if it hadn't happened, then where would we be? And, and so I think, especially coming out of, of a pandemic or even we're kind of still in the middle of it, I, I would hope that people come out of this feeling a little more hopeful um, as they move into their Easter Sunday. All the musicians taking part in the service are educators or music directors from local and area schools and churches. The music service of the Stations of the Cross begins at 3 o'clock this afternoon at the Chapel of the Incarnate Word on campus of the University of the Incarnate Word. It's free and open to the public. The music coming out of that organ is absolutely gorgeous. I've never been to that chapel, actually. Unbelievable. Live yeah. nearby, but... Great. Haven't been. It should be a beautiful service. Speaking of where you've been, you've been down on the border for the last three or four days covering some of those stories down there, and it was like hot, hot. So yeah. at least we don't have to deal with that. I think Wednesday was record breaking heat for Ooh, them 106, yes. 105, yeah. and which threw me for a loop because yesterday I was out at the quarry eating gelato, and it was pretty cold. So it was just a big shift for me. It yeah. was a little cool last night. At we've, least I felt like it. We've gone back and forth with temperatures and humidity this week, and Last night, this morning is a good example of that happening again. So yesterday, humidity was low, it was a beautiful day. Like Alicia said, it, it was cool, a little cool by the evening because the air was so dry, but things went back the other way overnight. Winds out of the south overnight, now they're light, but they pumped in a ton of moisture while we were sleeping. And no doubt if you've been outside already this morning, you have felt it. Our dew points are in the upper 60s in some spots, feeling muggy and in some cases getting close to oppressively humid. Uh, and here's a look at how our dew points changed overnight. So at 1 a.m. last night, our dew points were still in the 40s, feeling dry. By 3 a.m., they were at 58, approaching 60 degrees. And then that's where we've been this morning. Dew points have been steadily climbing all morning long, and it feels very very muggy out there. Humidity, relative humidity is at 84%. Winds are light out of the east southeast and temperatures sitting at 70 right now under overcast skies. Cloud cover is expansive and it's going to take a few more hours for this cloud cover to really start to break up. But nonetheless, we're already starting to see a few breaks here or there. And generally, the trend for the rest of the afternoon will be a gradual decrease in cloud cover. We're not going to clear out completely even through the afternoon, early evening, a mix of sun and clouds, but we should get some sunshine going. And that will help to take our temperatures that are in the upper 60s, low 70s now and put them in the mid to upper 80s. Those that clear out a bit sooner have a better chance to jump up closer to 88, 89 degrees. Those that take a little bit longer to clear out could be sitting in the low to mid 80s this afternoon. Overall, just warm and muggy with some gradual clearing today. As we get into your Easter weekend, things stay humid. This muggy air mass that has returned is not going anywhere over the weekend, and it's actually going to get hotter. Our afternoon high temperatures will be jumping into the low to mid 90s, both Saturday and Sunday this weekend. And we've also got some isolated rain chances up uh, all of us are going to be dealing with the heat and humidity this weekend, but just a few of us have the potential to see some showers, maybe a storm. So let's talk about the setup heading into the weekend. 
There will be a frontal boundary draped across Texas, and this is what's going to act as the trigger for some showers and storms to pop up late in the day, both Saturday and Sunday. Here's a look at future cast tomorrow, 7 p.m. So the sun is still out. We've still got the heat of the day to work with. Some showers and storms could pop up along this cold front that's likely to stall just north of the Texas Hill Country. So once this activity pops up tomorrow evening, we'll watch it really closely. If it can hang on for a couple of hours, it could try to drop south a little closer to Highway 90, but it's likely not going to last very long if it can even get going tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. A very similar setup heading into Sunday. We expect just a slightly higher coverage of some showers and storms to pop up along the stalled frontal boundary late Sunday afternoon into early Sunday evening. So we've been talking about this. If you've got plans Sunday morning for Easter through lunchtime early afternoon, we won't have to worry about any storms then. But as we get into the late afternoon and early evening, that's when we'll be watching for some pop up thunder showers. And of course, we'll be here to keep you updated. Just keep that case out weather authority app nearby. I mentioned though, all of us will be dealing with the heat and humidity with our high temperatures. This red line in the low to mid 90s factor in the humidity. Our heat index or what it feels like those numbers during the heat of the day this weekend could jump up closer to 100 degrees. So some early summer vibes sneaking in here this Easter weekend. As for today, look for some slow clearing this afternoon. Warm and humid with a high near 85 getting hotter this weekend. Low end late day rain and storm chances and next week Monday Tuesday look pretty quiet. Quiet, but the wind will be back, guys. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Spurs lost, but at least we got to see a little bit of the future, and it looks pretty bright with Devin Vassell. It really does. Devin Vassell, we know he can play defense, but he's really turned into a, a better shooter than what he was when he first came into the NBA, and he's just one of the bright young players on the Spurs roster. Now, coming up in just a second, we talked to him after that loss to the Pelicans, and you can just hear it in his voice just how sad and bummed out he was. Plus, in the WNBA, Nalissa Smith was drafted by the Fever, and she talks about her role this coming season. Coming up. The game has grown like right in front of our eyes, and I feel like it's so much talent in Texas that uh, it's finally becoming noticed. And, you know, in Indiana, like you said, it's a basketball state, so I'm excited to see, like, how the fan base is and how, how much everybody does love basketball. East Central great Nalista Smith is going from a football state to a basketball one in Indiana in Big Board Sports. Spurs second year shooting guard Devin Vassell had a solid game in the Spurs season ending loss to the Pelicans Wednesday night. He led the Spurs with 23 points, shooting 7 for 15 overall, including 7 of 13 from three point range. Now, after the Spurs 113 to 103 loss, Devin was asked about the mood inside the locker room. And to me, you can just hear in his voice how bummed out he was. I mean, we're disappointed. Um, I think that's the biggest, that, that's the word I can use. We're disappointed. Um, I mean, it's kind of the same I could say over and over. Like, we got to learn from it. We got to grow from it. We got to, you know what I'm saying? But I think we just got to sit down and, and watch the game and watch the mistakes that we had and watch some of the reads and watch, you know, the aggressiveness that we got to play with and learn from that and take that into the next season and, and, and build from that. During his pregame media session Wednesday night, Coach Pop told us that Becky Hammond was no longer with the team. She had to leave the starter head coaching responsibilities with the Las Vegas Aces. She's been on Pop's coaching staff since 2014, and yes, he's going to miss her. It's, it's not a good thing for us. She's been very, uh, uh, I don't know how to, how to say it, she's been wonderful for a while. Uh, just got used to her, you know, doing what she does. Uh, she's so gifted and so passionate. Uh, you know, the guys respect her so much, so it's a, it's a loss to not have her around. Uh, just to bounce things off of her, to hear her ideas, uh, to experience her competitiveness. Uh, there's so many things I can say about her, so uh, I just wish her well and I wish she was here. Monday night, the Indiana Fever selected Nalissa Smith with the second overall draft pick in the 2022 WNBA draft. The former Baylor star and East Central High School great was one of seven picks for the Fever. She spent her first three college seasons playing the five, but a change in coach last season brought a change of roles for her, and she's just ready to show the WNBA what she can do. 
Um, well, I feel like in any situation that coach puts me in, I'll be able to adjust to it. Just being that I started at the four and really I kind of played in college. My first like three years, I was just strictly on the block. So I feel like I learned a lot from the post then. And then last year, I kind of got to spread my game out a lot more. So I feel like if coach puts me at three, four, or five, I'll be able to adapt in that situation. Now, Alyssa will get her first taste of WNBA action Saturday, April 30th in the preseason when the Fever played the Chicago Sky. Folks over at East Central are fired up. They are indeed, aren't they? The NBA, or the WNBA, yeah. Yeah, in San Antonio, the girls' basketball scene here is a whole fired up to see her get drafted. Congratulations to her. Inspiring. Yep. All right, we'll be right back. As we take it a break, a new installment at the Capitol in Washington will honor the legacy of Justices Sandra Day O'Connor and the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The story still coming up. And straight ahead on KSAT News at noon, more revealing details about the alleged gunman of the New York subway shooting. Now to the latest on the subway shooting in New York City. Investigators revealing more details about the attack and manhunt as alleged gunman Frank James sits behind bars. The mayor of New York City thanking first responders today. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Three days after this terror was unleashed in the New York City subway system, the mayor thanking first responders and the transit workers who helped subway riders to safety. New Yorkers looked out for each other and transit workers, as always, Look out for us. The N train operator and conductor trying to keep people calm when police say 62 year old Frank James opened fire during Tuesday morning's commute. James being held without bail after his first court appearance, where federal prosecutors called his rampage entirely premeditated and carefully planned. Authorities say James shot 10 people and had the means to carry out more attacks with ammunition and other gun related items stashed in a storage unit in Philadelphia where he was living in an Airbnb. Investigators now piecing together his whereabouts during that urgent nationwide manhunt that lasted nearly 30 hours. But the NYPD says it was James himself who called the Crime Stoppers tip line, giving up his location and essentially turning himself in. And Law enforcement sources telling ABC many lives were likely saved because James may have rushed his alleged rampage, setting off smoke grenades earlier than intended, then kneeling to avoid that smoke when he opened fire, most victims shot in their hands and legs. James is facing a federal terror-related charge and has not entered a plea yet. His attorney asking the judge to provide him with psychiatric care. So far, no word on what motivated him to allegedly carry out this attack. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Cleanup efforts continue in Kentucky as the National Weather Service confirms an EF1 tornado did touch down in Louisville earlier this week. There was damage in several areas of the Louisville region, and those areas were surveyed yesterday. That tornado blew through Wednesday night, ripping roofs off of homes, knocking down power lines, leaving debris scattered across neighborhoods. Officials say no deaths or serious injuries were reported. Louisville's mayor declared a state of emergency for the city. By unanimous vote, the Republican National Committee will not take part in the Commission on Presidential Debates for the time being. This comes after numerous indications that the GOP wanted to cut its ties with the organization that has been in charge of general election presidential debates. RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel says the search is on to find, quote, newer, better debate platforms to ensure future nominees are not forced to go through the bias CPD, end quote. The nonprofit commission debuted in 1987 with bipartisan support. Russia forbidding nearly 400 U.S. lawmakers from entering the country. Russian officials announced they are imposing sanctions on 398 members of Congress. The move is being viewed as retaliation for a similar travel ban the U.S. implemented against 328 members of Russia's parliament. Poking fun at Russia's action was a rapid and bipartisan affair. Democratic Representative Brendan Boyle tweeted, quote, well, there goes my spring break plans, unquote. Republican Representative John Curtis commented on an honor to be included on the no travel list. 
In Buffalo, New York City and county workers are scrambling to keep a World War II era destroyer from sinking. The USS The Sullivans, the big attraction at the Buffalo's Naval and Military Park, is taking on water. It developed a crack in the hole back in 2018 and restoration work was underway, but it had to stop in October because of the cold temperatures. Repairs are slated to resume on Monday. That ship was named after five brothers from Waterloo, Iowa, who died during the Naval Battle of Guadalcanal. Outside with live cam, we're looking for some sun, but we don't want the heat that it's going to bring or the more humidity that it's going to bring. But we would it's like a some sun. complicated order. It is com I know. <laughs> it's always complicated. It's not Whataburger. That's there in the live cam. Oh, I, it's Burger that would be where good you too. can have it your way. They have the stickers and everything. I don't have the, I don't have the stickers. I can't keep up with what David wants. The weather. Um, Want to yeah. write it down? Need a pen? Uh, yeah, just jot it down. I'll get it after I okay. wrap this up. Uh, 70 now, and we will see a little bit of sun this afternoon. Not total sunshine. And he's right, because as the sun comes out, we heat up even more, and then the mugginess becomes more apparent. So vicious cycle here. Currently, relative humidity 84%, and we're sitting right at 70 under overcast skies. So expect some slow clearing this afternoon. We should be inching closer to 80 by 2 o'clock, depending on how fast this clearing begins. Topping out mid-80s for a lot of us this afternoon. Those that start to clear out sooner could jump into the upper 80s. And by this evening, falling to near 80 by 8 p.m. So if you've got plans tonight, it is going to be on the warm side and it's going to stay humid. We'll have a little bit of a light breeze here or there, but not much wind this evening. So I think it could end up feeling pretty sticky later on tonight. Our morning low 61. Uh, that's pretty close to average for this time of year, but our average high is 80. We'll be a little bit warmer than that this afternoon, but by Easter weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Look at these forecast high temperatures. Load them in 90s through Sunday afternoon. So we'll be trending some 10 to 15 degrees above average for Easter weekend. Factor in the humidity and we'll likely see our first round of some elevated heat index readings this weekend. We also have some low end chances of rain. I'll walk you through that setup and that forecast once again coming up in the full forecast. That'll be along in just a little bit, guys. Thank you, Katie. A glass of wine with dinner or a bottle of beer on the patio may feel relaxing, but when does it become a problem? With more, here's ABC News' Ike Ijachi. For some people, the pop of champagne or the clink of a glass signals a celebration, but for others, alcohol can become a problem and even a life-threatening condition. It's not just about how many drinks you have, it's about how alcohol affects you and your life. When it's a problem, doctors call it alcohol use disorder. Researchers from the University of Missouri are developing a better way to identify who is at risk of alcohol use disorder so they can get treatment. They've created a whole new new framework describing why we make certain choices. That includes how much control someone has over their actions, how alcohol can make someone feel better, or how it can help them avoid negative feelings. Researchers hope this will give a more personalized approach to diagnosing and treating alcohol use disorder. If you feel like you should cut down on your drinking, talk to your doctor. Remember, quitting alcohol cold turkey after drinking heavily can be life-threatening. Your doctor can help you do it safely. With this Medical Minute, I'm Ike Ajachi, ABC News. Still coming up this half hour, the moon will illuminate the sky this weekend, and it may appear to be a different color just in time for Easter. And coming up in sports, Miles Bridges got a little peeved and threw his mouthpiece in the stands. That's got to be kind of gross for the fan who ended up with that. Larry Mirrors with a punishment in a few minutes. And coming up, we'll tell you about a new honor that's in the works to memorialize Supreme Court Justices Sandra Day O'Connor and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Welcome back in your consumer news. Buying a home, if you haven't noticed, now the most expensive in a generation. Freddie Mac is reporting the standard 30-year mortgage loan has hit 5% for the first time in more than 10 years. The average cost of the popular 15-year fixed rate mortgage jumping to more than 4%. This is amid higher housing prices and tight supply of homes for sale. New Macs could be coming soon. Bloomberg reporting Apple now testing at least nine new models containing next generation M2 chips with third party apps in its app store. They include new MacBook Air, a Mac Mini and an entry level Mac Pro. The new machines could be released in the next few months. 
And U.S. Supreme Court Justices Sandra Day O'Connor and Ruth Bader Ginsburg will now be forever memorialized with statues on the grounds of the U.S. Capitol. O'Connor was the first woman to serve on the high court who became influ an influential author of decisions on abortion rights and racial affirmative action. Ginsburg consistently, consistently delivered progressive votes on divisive social issues, including voting rights. Statues of the two iconic justices will join a few that depict female pioneers at the Capitol. Their statues will be placed near the old Supreme Court chamber in the Senate wing of the Capitol. They built it. They came. Now they want to make it bigger. A lot bigger. That's the hope, at least, of the people who own the iconic site in Iowa where the movie Field of Dreams was filmed. They want to expand the 190-acre site by nearly 100 more acres. The company Go the Distance Baseball bought the Field of Dreams movie site last year, and now they want to add more baseball fields, team dormitories, a hotel, an outdoor concert amphitheater. It's slated to cost about $80 million, and it'll be completed by the end of next year. And this weekend, you may want to take a moment and look up at the moon. We've heard of a blue moon, but how about a pink moon? NASA says the pink full moon will illuminate the sky from now till Monday morning. The moon should be at its peak fullness Saturday afternoon. The pink moon honors its spring arrival, so just be aware the moon will not actually be the color pink. We just call it the pink moon. Thank you for saying that. Yes, no actual pink moon in the sky. But the reason why it's called the pink moon is because yes, we're getting into spring and it's actually because there's a very vibrant pink uh, type of color really over the Eastern US this time of year. So that's why it's called the, the pink moon. There you go. I don't, we don't have those flowers here, so. Oh, we don't? Womp womp. And the moon won't actually be pink, but it'll be nice and full and bright, so there you go. Uh, today's pollen count uh, is full, especially the oak count, very high with the count of 21,000. That is our highest reading so far this season. Mold and grass are low. Thankfully, we are at the peak right here, the peak of oak season. So these numbers, we don't like them, but they kind of make sense through the rest of the month. And as we get into May, those oak numbers should steadily start to fall. The aquifer today also falling down three tenths of a foot. Another look at your Easter weekend forecast coming up. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was like dark. We was looking for the pink moon. <laughs> I was. I was going to say that. We know this weekend you're probably yeah. going to be calling. Man, I cannot speak today. You're going to be needing some help because you insist that there's going to be a pink moon. No, there's not. You just explained to us it's not the thing. It's, there's not a pink moon. If you're seeing yeah. a pink moon, there's something wrong with you. Call the doctor. Yes. You may have been enjoying the Easter weekend <laughs> way else too is much. Happening on. Too much egg dye. Uh, <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, and Alicia looked it up. The kind of flowers. What's it? Moss. Moss flocks. Moss flocks. And moss she said flocks. it kind of um, kind of spreads out like a blanket and it blooms mm -hmm. this time of year and it's pink. So that's why moss pink moon. There you go. Google it. Google it. They're pretty flowers. Uh, let's look at the time lapse. I'm going to start you back at midnight, 12 a.m. this morning. Skies were still clear. And then overnight while we were sleeping, bam, clouds rolled back in quickly, as did high humidity. It's very low cloud cover this morning, some patchy drizzle, a few sprinkles, and yeah, you can feel the humidity. It's much higher today. Uh, we're left with expansive cloud cover across the entire area, with the exception of places like Del Rio, maybe even Rock Springs. You guys are starting to clear out, so this cloud deck is going to gradually uh, shrink in on itself and start to break up. We've got some breaks, even moving into far southwestern Bear County, a little break there in southern Medina County. So we'll see gradual clearing as we head into the afternoon. Currently just shy of 70 at Canyon Lake. Meanwhile, maybe under one of those breaks, 76 in comfort and 80 in divide. So your high temperatures this afternoon, dependent on how quickly you start to see some sun around San Antonio, mid 80s, those that start to clear out a bit sooner, could jump into the upper 80s later on this afternoon. This evening promises to be warm and sticky, so short sleeves, shorts for any evening festivities uh, you may have planned on this Friday. Uh, dew point numbers are way up, even as high as 70 at Randolph, so we are feeling muggy, even oppressively muggy currently. And now that the humidity is back, it's not going anywhere. This weekend, we're going to continue to be in a very muggy air mass all through Easter weekend. Uh, some drier air sneaking in early next week, but uh, we can't complain too much about the humidity because we need that 
to go with chances of rain. Very dry air is not conducive to rain chances, and we do have some isolated chances of showers and storms in the forecast this weekend. Let me show you the setup once again. It's all going to be dependent on a couple of stalled fronts across Texas and even across parts of the deep south. But uh, for our purposes here in south central Texas, a very weak cold fronts will be dropping down into central Texas tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. And as we heat up tomorrow afternoon, late afternoon, early evening, here's 7 p.m. Some showers and storms could pop up. Initially, they could be on the strong side and we'll have to watch how they behave if they can develop tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. They could try to move through parts of the hill country. They shouldn't make it too far, but again, we'll watch it really closely. Quiet through Sunday, and again, most of your Easter Sunday is going to be quiet, but we will see a similar scenario late Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening with some more storms possible along this stalled frontal boundary. So we'll keep an eye on things for you. It'll just be one of those setups to where by the evening hours, we'll have to watch to see if any showers or storms pop up to our north because a few lucky yards could get some rain toward the end of the day Saturday and again on Easter Sunday. Over the next seven days, rainfall outlook doesn't look horrible. Um, we've got widespread potential for a half inch of rain or less. It's not great, but it's better than what we've been dealt lately. We are looking at a potential weather pattern change heading into late next week and next weekend that would bring us potentially a more active weather weather pattern and potentially more consistent chances of rain. Again, that's heading into next weekend. For now, we'll focus on your Easter weekend warm, humid with isolated storm chances. We'll be right back. USA Fiesta spring game went down last night at Ferris Stadium, marking the end of spring football for the Roadrunners. Returning quarterback Frank Harris escapes the pocket to pick up 14 yards before he gets out of bounds. Moments later on the goal line, Harris to tight end Dan Dishman for a touchdown at 7 nothing offense. But the defense would tie the game at 7, and it would all come down to this final kick. And check it out, the entire defense is on the field trying to distract the kicker, and it works because the kick was no good. I let the defense choose the kicker. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so I cut a deal. I said, if you choose the kicker and you bring the defense out here to harass him, Coach Lelt was literally in front of the kid, like waving his cap. And I said, so if it's a miss, it's a tie. They signed up for the agreement, and they, that's how he went down. Oh, that's funny. The Roadrunners will kick off their 2022 season in the Alamo Dome September the 3rd against Houston. Poppin' the Spurs picked up veteran shooting guard Josh Richardson at the trade deadline, and the seven-year vet quickly became a leader of the squad. Pop said Josh gained the respect of the team immediately, and Josh appreciates how the Spurs took him in. It's never easy moving to a new situation. This is my first time ever doing that in the middle of a season, so I didn't really know what to expect. But, you know, I saw a team kind of kind of needing a guy just to be vocal, just to, you know, fill in the little gaps. And I, I felt like I did that, and I, you know, appreciate just how they accepted me with um, open arms because they didn't have to do that. Um, Becky Hammond was my shooting coach, was my coach that I came to for everything. So uh, I thank her, you know, endlessly just for making my transition here, you know, a lot easier. Um, you know, I thank Pop. I thank all these guys. You know, it kind of made me a little emotional just because uh, they didn't have to do that. And they didn't have to, they don't have to listen to me when I talk because I'm very vocal. And they could have just blew me off, but, you know, they didn't. And I really, I really thank them for that. And this organization, you know, I just thank them for everything they did. Charlotte Hornets forward Miles Bridges was fined $50,000 for throwing his mouthpiece into the spectator stands, which resulted in the mouthpiece striking a fan. The incident occurred after Bridges received two technical fouls and was ejected in Charlotte's 132-103 loss to the Hawks on Wednesday. Let's take you to Los Angeles for the Rangers and Angels yesterday. Top of the second when the Rangers, Jonah Mime turns on a ball from Shohei Otani and smacks a grand slam down the right field line that takes puts Texas on top, pardon me, 4-2. to The Rangers take this game by the final of 10-5. to All right, so funny moment now from the Padres game. Rookie C.J. Abrams just hit his first home run of his MLB career. When he gets inside the dugout, he gets the silent treatment. His teammates just ignore him, all right? He smiles and 
rolled along with it. After he put his helmet up, then the team swarmed <laughs> him and decided Aww. to celebrate high fives, etc. I love baseball when they do that kind of stuff. Welcome to the big league. Absolutely, rookie. rookie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Larry. Speaking of rookie, no rookies downtown. They are seasoned <laughs> veterans right here now. Yeah, don't make us sound older. <laughs> Well, it is dance, magic dance today because a world-class magician is coming to town for a limited time. Yes, Nick Paul is here. He will be appearing at the Magician's Agency Theater. We're getting a sneak peek right now, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, like, I don't know how to solve it. Do you know how to no. solve Rubik's Cube? No I way. I, I can actually do it in the darkness of a bag. I, this is a mixed-up cube here. Actually, I'm going to, could you hold on to this bag for me? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to have you hold on just okay. by the top. Just okay. by the top right oh, there. The top. Good. Good. And what is, what is your favorite magical word for Easter? Um, abracadabra. Yeah, abracadabra. Wow, Easter. that's very <laughs> Easter themed. That's neat. Okay, watch. Do you feel anything happen? No. So open up the bag. I don't want to touch it. Reach inside there. Okay. Oh my gosh, Jenny! Oh, you're amazing. amazing. <laughs> wow, it's gone. Stop it! Here, we have more coming up. <laughs> yes, more <laughs> fabulous tricks from Nick coming up. All right. And look at this deliciousness mm. right here. Aldaco has dessert for Easter weekend, and we are going to taste this tres leches cakes. I mean, someone's got to do That's it, right, Jen? That's a beautiful tres leches cake. Yes, tough task. Also, it's a happy space Friday. Just We have all the tips from a local designer on how you can spruce up your Easter fest festivities with some decor. And if you're looking for a scaly new pet, oh, well, be sure to check out the <laughs> Reptile Expo this weekend. We introduce you to some of them. Look who oh. hopped in. Oh, look. Yes. Easter Bunny. Yes, we yes. want you to share your Easter traditions and pictures at SA Live KSAT. Slow clearing this afternoon, a high around 85, and then hotter this weekend. Low to mid 90s for your afternoon high temperatures. We'll be watching each evening for some isolated thunder showers to pop up north of San Antonio. Keep your case out weather app handy. That is how we will be keeping you updated over this Easter weekend. And then some low end chances of rain return by about the middle of next week, guys. Thank you, Katie. I'm not sure about the reptile, but there was a bunny and there was food and there's magic. And we are going to perform our own magic right now because SA Live starts right now. Watch this. Today on SA Live, take a look at all this delicious cuisine. The Seven Seas Food Festival is underway at SeaWorld and we're gonna give you a taste. And Tower of Americas has an Easter egg extravaganza this weekend with egg hunts and the Easter Bunny. Plus, Easter brunch for every bunny, where you can enjoy a tasty meal on the Riverwalk this Sunday. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Oh, 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 oh yes. Hello, and <laughs> happy Friday. It's Good Friday, and Easter is this Sunday, and we have a few Easter surprises hopping through set today. <laughs> That's right, he's here, the big guy. We've got him early. Good afternoon, I'm Fiona Gorstiza. I'm Jen Tobias Jeske filling in for Mike. We've been using that line all week, right? <laughs> Hopping in. Yes, it's, yes, we're counting down to Easter, so hopefully the kids that are off are watching today because we have yes. Easter Bunny here. Yes. All right, well, another world-class magician is coming to town for a limited time. It's a family uh, fun activity this Easter weekend. Nick Paul is here. He'll, he will be appearing at the Magi Magician's Agency Theater throughout the weekend. Welcome. Hi, thanks. Appearing. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'll just do this. <laughs> yes. I'm here. We made it. Now you have some card tricks and of course, up close magic to show us, right? I, I do. It's, I mean, we're close, so let's do it. I have a couple prizes. So actually, you know, I want you guys to choose what we're going to do first, Ooh. all right? So okay. this is exciting. We okay. didn't set this up. Ooh. Whatever you choose. Uh, what do you choose? Yeah. One to six, whatever you choose. <laughs> uh, four. Four. All right, you can change your mind. Do you want to change your mind? No. Going four, Z? Yes. All right, let's see. This is what you, whatever you, you choose. Unless you want me to. Do you this want me to change my mind? <laughs> no. You, I, I, is that I, a hint? I, I, totally up to you. I'm married. I understand. I get it. I'm, I'm flexible. Okay, here we go. Ready? Okay. Four. Good. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see what you get here. Oh, this is good. It's a card uh, trick. Uh, That's what we're going to do, a card <laughs> trick. Yeah. Okay. All right, those were the other <laughs> options, though. Oh, so. my God. It would have been a much more viral show, but that's okay. We'll do something else. Um, you know, my wife and I recently got tattoos for our eight-year wedding anniversary, oh. and I'm not a tattoo guy. Are you? Do you no, have any tattoos? No, no tattoo friends. No. Nothing. Have you wanted a tattoo? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. What, what, but what, you don't what, want to disclose this it? on air right now? I don't say. Okay, well, that's okay. <laughs> I'm not a tattoo person. If you think it, I got a tattoo on my arm. A favorite uh, movie is Wally, so I got a little Wally. Oh, gotta I know, it's adorable. It's freaking adorable. But here's the thing I'm not a tattoo guy. Uh, if you think, because they don't change. The only thing constant is change. The only thing permanent is impermanence. If you really want to get deep about this right now, so that's why I like card tricks because the card tricks, the cards are always changing. This is exciting. We're gonna get a card at random here. Got all different cards, different, 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 different. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna do this one at a time. All different cards here. And if you could, you're gonna say stop at any point. Okay. okay? So what you're gonna do one at a time here. Like this, anytime you want, you say stop. The longer you go, the longer uh, the trick is and the longer the segment is. But I'm fine with it. I have stop. nowhere to be. Okay, Okay. so I'm kind of in between three cards. You choose. I set one on the table. This one right here or the, that one. Which one would you like? Uh, that one. That's one. Okay, you, only you're going to see it. You got okay. it? Got it? Memorize mm -hmm. it. Take a peek at mm -hmm. it. If you forget it, this it. is a really mm -hmm. dumb trick. Right, Once again, all different cards, different, different, different. Okay, cool. Now, what we're going to do here is keep that card inside your brain. Perfect. You can pull back there. And um, I want you just to keep that card in your brain. Don't forget it. That's very important. Okay. I, uh, I told you you got a tattoo, but the tattoo actually has something very specific. It's pretty neat. Oh my he gosh. has a little card. I'll show you. I got a little Wally right here. And uh, oh, by the way, could you name a movie for me? Castaway. Uplifting, great. <laughs> um, we, we chose Wally, you chose Castaway, that's great, good. Uh, I, uh, I got a tattoo, and Wally's actually holding on to something. Check it out right there, a tiny little playing card. Whoa, look at that. Oh that, my gosh, was that your card? That, was your card the five of hearts? No. It, what? Wait, let me see. Your card was not the five of hearts? <laughs> okay, you can yes. pull back now, you can pull back. That's, uh, <laughs> Uh, hey, that Rubik's Cube <laughs> trick was really good, though. Let's focus on the positive. Um, what was your card? The Three of Hearts. Three of Hearts? I think so. Maybe my memory No, that's, went... I trust you. Okay. I trust, so off by two. Off by two. Okay. All right, they say that once you get one tattoo, you start wanting more tattoos. So I got another tattoo. I got it on this arm, actually. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no right way. Right here. And it says, off by two. Oh Look at that. <laughs> And my other favorite film is Castaway. I ruined. Isn't that weird? <laughs> oh, you're feeling horrible. I ruined um, the trick. Yeah, oh, no, it's okay. This okay. Is, this is backup. All is good. Backup. No, only, only Mike does that. <laughs> only Mike. Oh, okay. That's why I'm here. I'm trying to make uplift you guys, make you feel better. Yeah, it's so, better. Okay. so what what trick is your most popular trick? Uh, I do a trick where I blow up a giant balloon, and I put my head in the balloon, and I try to find someone's card with it. So oh I think gosh. they showed a picture of that earlier. Yeah, it was. It's, it's a strange one. That's how I got hired at Disney World. I did that trick as an audition. They're like, "Okay, you're weird. We're gonna hire you." So, oh, there yeah, that it one is. right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's exciting. And you so, worked yeah. on Netflix before? Yeah, I, I, I was a magic consultant for the Netflix series Magic for Humans. My buddy Justin Willman hosts it. Really fun show. Fun binge if you haven't seen it. We did three seasons. Very exciting. Uh, yeah, it was a really fun. And thing Conan to too. I was on my wife, my dog, and I were on Conan. How yeah, we cool did a magic trick on Conan a couple That's years awesome. ago. I love fun. it. Okay, do you have another trick that you can do? I got one more. I want to give you guys. Sure. I do want to genuinely give okay. you guys a gift okay. here. Okay. I have a little piece of paper here. This is something you guys can take with you. Got a blank piece of paper, and uh, this is a little gift. For, thank you guys for having me. A little present. So I'm, I've been practicing my uh, my uh, cutting skills here. Hopefully, I don't cut off my finger because okay. I do I'm have three shows. <laughs> Three shows this weekend at the Magician's Agency. All right, here. Oh, here we go. Get better scissors. Okay, one more here. Right there, yeah. And just a few more cuts here. Don't worry, this is this is great television right now. I should have done something else. And, and yes, okay, here we go. Now, uh, if you could, uh, you had a magical word before. What is another magical word we could use? Uh, go ahead, Fiona. Um, the, uh, bada bing, bada boom. Bada bam. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. Very New York. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, watch, watch. Open up okay. here. Got a little gift here. And do this carefully. Oh my gosh. Oh, here we go. It's coming to life. No yes. Way. Yes, okay. Right here. Oh. This, you guys might recognize this if I do it correctly. No way is that our logo. This is your logo. Oh my goodness. It says well Live. Done. Well done. Look at the E in there. Look at the E in there. That is amazing. Thank yes, you. you can see him Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the Magician's Agency Theater here in downtown. The show starts at 7 p.m. and he'll be in town this weekend only. You can purchase your tickets online. Mm -hmm. Yes, all right. Well, of course, Easter is this weekend. So we want to know, you know, do you have any Easter traditions? Yes. And of course, you know, do you decorate eggs yes. with your kids? Yes. 
Yes, right? mine is always going to my grandpa. So he's he's going to cook up some food for us, and we'll all get together. Yes, what about you? The good yes, food. Yes. We go to church. Yes, yes. Church too. Okay, yes. with my mom. <laughs> She's always excited because the whole family is there. Yes. You know. So let us know what your Easter traditions are, and if you have any Easter photos. I know some folks have been taking those yes, already. It's a big deal. You know, with their mm -hmm. kids or with families. Mm -hmm. So have you, have, Nick? Have you taken any uh, pictures with the Easter Bunny yet? I haven't. No. Is he available? Well, you know, we can make that magic happen oh, okay. right now. Okay, <laughs> for you. No, oh and there you go. Look at this. He's oh here. Gosh, look at this. See? I know him. Profile picture for social him. media. Done. Right now. Oh, You're welcome. You're welcome. This is going to be big. Yeah. Don't Popular say we don't take Instagram. care of you. Thank you to Scott, our photographer, <laughs> over there. Yes, All right? but share your photos. You might see them a little later in the show. Easter Bunny or not, whatever you want to share. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is day three of us singing on the show, by the way. Sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I to disagree? I've traveled the world and the sea world oh seven gosh. seas. Go, Jen. Everybody's looking for something. <laughs> Woo! Yes, and they'll have it all at Sea World Seven Seas event. I don't sing as well as. Yeah. Well, no, okay. listen. Don't worry. We're not going to do any more. It's only an hour show. We're not going to do that to you. All right. Yeah. Okay. I got a taste of all the cuisine you can enjoy from around the world on this fry. Yay! Mm -hmm. Take a look. Well, the Seven Seas Food Festival has sailed right on back to SeaWorld San Antonio. And joining me now to tell you all about the delicious food and fabulous drinks is Chef Scott Runskowski, executive chef here, okay? So tell us what is all new this year. What can folks expect? Well, there's lots of all new items that are on there. So many that I, truth, I can't even remember. Top of the, uh, right off the top of my head, we've got some drinks in front of you. You have a blood peach sorbet bellini. Blood peach sorbet bellini. bellini. You got an espresso Ooh. martini. <laughs> you got tiramisu gelato with actual little lady fingers built right into it. <laughs> You're like the Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I, 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 try, I try to be. So taste that and tell okay. me what you think on that one. Mm. Prosecco blood peach sorbet. Oh, that's good. We've got a Woo. limited selection of chef's favorite sorbets or ice cream going to be at France, so it's going to be an ever-changing menu. So we've got six more weeks of this going on. So it could be a lychee sorbet. It could be, uh, oh, I don't know, a passion fruit mango sorbet. Just lots of, there's tricks up these sleeves, even though there aren't sleeves inside <laughs> it. What you see in front of you is I just brought three of the countries out of the 10 that we have here. We've got Germany. We've got a mini pretzel roll with a, a bratwurst slow caramel onions you got a braised beef and spatzel we slide over to Greece you got a lamb burger that I, I think I'm the only one making it with a spicy feta cheese you got baklava Woo. sliding over to France where our crepes are made we, we have a, a hazelnut with strawberry crepe slide over to Italy we've got multiple flatbread pizzas this is our chicken margarita pizza we've got our Sicilian cannoli with caramel sauce on her and then we've got our larger than life gourmet meatball with a five ingredient red sauce that'll knock your socks off you just made me an offer I can't refuse yeah, and this is this is this is only partials from three of them we have 10 areas represented inside of here. So we've got Korea, wow. Japan, Brazil, Hawaii, Mexico, Artisan Street Tacos, Boyo Bill, with Citrus Salsa. I got I got a lot going on. So. so how does it work, okay? You've got these passes, right? So it's very easy. You get your pass. For uh -huh. $65, you get 10 punches. For $80, you get 15 punches. For our pass holders that are out there, uh, you get, buy a 15 punch, you get three extra punches as your discount portion of it. So so you'll get 18 punches that you can use for the next six weekends all the way through Memorial Monday. You can come back every weekend and keep them punching away. Each punch is either a sample size beverage mm -hmm. or a sample size enough for two people food option. As you can see, they're kind of a larger sample, so two, maybe two plus mm -hmm. people can try it. But you'll be stuffed after three countries. Of course. <laughs> Look at how rich and delicious that looks. And of course, so much family fun to have here at SeaWorld, including the most recent addition, right? We've got our tidal surge, which is actually in our background right now. It's an amazing ride, screaming. 135 <laughs> feet in the air. It's, 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 yeah, it's a scary little ride. Ah! 
<laughs> but yeah, we, we've got a ton of fun here. I mean, it, it, just, it just keeps getting better. All this right. is our seventh year, so All we're, right. we're getting better. All right, tell folks, of course, where they can go for more information. SeaWorldSanAntonio.com is where you can get all this information and you can purchase your passes once you get to the park. Come on through the gate. We sell them at all the, the kiosk huts. You can pick up the passes right there. No need to worry, no need to hurry. Just come on down and see it. All right, and for all that information, you can head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab or just snap that QR code on your screen. Okay, I know you'd love sampling and food, but would you ride the ride? Oh, yeah. After right? seeing your video, yeah, looks like a great time. Can't be any worse than that, right? Okay, all right, so if you head to salive.com right now, you can win a family four-pack of tickets to SeaWorld. Be sure to enter right there. All right, SA Live continues with the KSAT Insider Prize Wheel. Today's contestant spins the wheel round and round. Where does it land? Stick around and find out. And the Easter Bunny is paying us a special visit. The Tower of the Americas has an Easter extravaganza this weekend, and the Easter Bunny will be there for egg hunts, egg dyeing, and a whole lot more.